Welcome to yet another edition of Gibbage's Video Tutorials. This time we're going to be concentrating on getting some basic animations in for things like landing gears, flaps, all, all the other little animated parts of the aircraft. So first things first is let's get familiar with some of the basic interfaces here. As you'll see down at the bottom we have a new section that I've usually hidden for uh, just a little extra desktop area. Uh, this is pretty much the main tools here, right here, that you'll be using for animations. Uh, first off, we have the scrub bar, which is this 0 from 100. What you do is click and drag, and you can see it counts up all the way till the end, where it is 100, 100. What that represents is the frames. And by scrubbing back and forth, that is basically like playing the frames back and forth. So we can uh, scrub it back and forth, and you'll see that in the animation later on and it's a good way of testing the animation getting a good feel for how things are working below that is the keyframes uh, down here you'll see later on uh, keyframes and colored bars and each one of these numbers represents a position in the frames right here we have zero all the way through 100 that means we have 100 frames in this animation we can always increase that by going over here to this little clock and bar this opens up our animation uh, time configuration right here. You can see animation start and end, length, and frame count. Right now we're just going to want to concentrate on length and put 200 in there. And you can see right here that's changed the animation bar from 0 to 200. Now we have 200 frames to work with instead of just 100. Uh, you really have to check with the engine. Um, IL-2 uses 100, uh, Flight Sim 2004 and uh, uh, FSX uses 200, and uh, you pretty much just have to uh, account for the game engine that you're working in. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get started here. So right now we've got sphere selected and we're just going to make a quick sphere just to give you a quick look into animations. So let's move that on top of the uh, grid surface. In order to start animation, what we want to do is either hit the end key, which will turn on the auto key, or actually click on the auto key here. So let's click that on, and you can see right now our scrub bar is red, and we also have a red frame around a window. That means that anything you do right now to the scene is going to be animated. So uh, just keep that in mind that you'll have be turning that on and off. So uh, if you move anything, it will animate. So first thing we want to do is go to let's say frame 50 here or 100 halfway through and we want to move this up a little bit and you can see right here it put two little red bars one at the start and one at the end right here what this represents is the beginning movement which is the first position it was in and its current movement where we just put it so if we scrub the scrub bar you can see that it's going up and down from where the object began to where we placed it now if we go back here to 200 and move this back down to the surface, you can see right here we've got a basic animation. We can play that here. It's pretty slow because it's got a lot of frames to go through. Uh, if you want, since this right here, this frame 100 is the top position, we can also slide this down to 20 and select this 200 which is the bottom position and slide it down to 40 and if we play that it'll be a lot faster because those movements are having ha have to happen in a shorter amount of time so that is basic movement right here we can go over here to 60 slide it over here 80 slide it on over 100 and then slide it on over and you can see it's creating one of these bars for each time I move the object and of course if you play that you get a manic ball now that's for movement right now we're just going to uh, actually delete this object here uh, just remember to turn off your auto key but because like I said at, with the auto key on everything you do in max is going to be added to the animation so delete that with the delete key and let's do a cylinder now for a cylinder 
like uh, things like the landing gear perhaps you know this is going to be the main strut or something you want to do a rotation again you go into your auto key go halfway in to 100 and rotate it it's very simple go to 200 rotate it and you can see right here as we scrub through it's animated very very simple uh, you can get get through most landing gears by using just the very two basic animation tools, which is rotate and move. Let's go ahead and delete this object, turn off animation, delete the object, and unhide all. Right here is just a just a concept aircraft. This is no specific aircraft. This is my own concept. Just me fooling around in a couple of hours just to see you know what kind of aircraft I can build and right now we're going to put these animations both rotation and move into practice so hopefully one of the things you've done when animate uh, well not animating but modeling is keeping the pivots uh, you can see right here if I go to the move this XYZ this is the main pivot this is how you animate it if you do the rotation and or move it's going to rotate around this pivot you can always modify the pivot by going to effect only and actually moving it around let's undo that control Z but here turn on the animation go to frame 100 and rotate you can see that 90 degrees and it's tucked away in the wheel well if I uh, turn off animation you can see we've got a very basic animation but one of the things you might be wondering is how the wheels, since they're separate objects, are following the main object. Well, that is another piece of animation right here, which is the link and unlink. For different objects like these wheels, you have to link it to the parent. There's both parent and children, just like in an adult situation, the child follows the parent. So what you do is link from the parent to the child right here. If I were to link, say, this propeller to this landing gear strut and play the animation, you can see it is linked up. Now it's not permanently attached and it can inherit its own animations. As you can see here, the child can be animated without affecting the parent. So that's one of the things you're really going to have to understand when you start animating is the parent and child relationship. So easy way to understand it is just link everything to what you want to animate. Boom, it's all linked up. And so when we slide it, it animates. Now if we break the link, you can see if we slide it, it doesn't continue on with the uh, uh, parent. Let's go ahead and link it back up. Also, these doors, since there's no real uh, complex parent child, we can go into animate here, move it over to frame 100, and close the doors. Now, if we play this, we've got a slight problem here. The landing gear is going to crash right through the doors. So what we do is come over here and move the beginning of the frame close towards the end. And what that will do is delay the reaction of the landing gear wheel well doors till the gears are in the, its place. Let's do it to the other one, down to 90. And you see we've got a pretty basic animation here. 